David Stanek, and I'd like to invite and welcome you to the free online audio and video companion from my new book, Mastering the Tables of Time, which is a comprehensive method to improve your groove, coordination, polyrhythmic, and soloing skills. The method is built around the framework of what is commonly referred to as the table of time, or rhythm scale, or timetable. It's an ordered flow of subdivisions that move through or around the quarter note pulse, like so. One, two, three, four. One, triplet, two, triplet, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, triplet, two, triplet, three, triplet, four, triplet, one, e, and a two, e, and a three, e, and a four, e, and one, triplet, and triplet, two, triplet, and triplet, three, triplet, and triplet, four, triplet, and triplet, one, like so. All musical styles are defined by how the subdivisions within their rhythms are phrased to give the proper feeling to the music and being solid in the quarter note pulse is the foundation of good timekeeping. Mastering the tables of time combines the foundations of rhythm and the vocabulary of the drum set in ways you may not have seen before. My work in developing the method was inspired by Tony Williams, Joe Morello, and a host of other very influential artists. As it grew, it surprised me in how broad it was in its inclusiveness. Everything I threw at it seemed to make sense musically and offered the opportunity to improve both my timekeeping and my overall musical vocabulary at once. So the book offers examples of musical phrasing, accents, dynamics, even chord change intervals, four-way coordination, rudiments, polyrhythms, backbeat and jazz grooves, and soloing studies, all wrapped around the table of time to produce results that will just blow your mind. My website contains free tutorials of the concepts that are explored in the book, and in this segment, I'd like to preface that by sharing some thoughts and tips on timekeeping that will translate better when heard and seen than they would off the printed page. This will help you maximize your potential for musical application of the foundation you'll gain through the book's studies. Because this is a method focusing on musical timekeeping, it's important to practice the examples with a metronome of any type as a point of reference to help anticipate and correct areas where you might find yourself rushing or dragging the tempo. To further develop your inner clock, it's equally important to practice the same things again without the metronome and focus on your consistency. Recording and listening to your practice is very helpful in this regard. It's also important to find the balance between solid time and a good feel. Time that is correctly quantized but feels stiff or forced is not the goal. Good feeling time is an even greater challenge because there is a variety of approaches to achieving it. Let's explore some right now. In these examples, we'll focus on the downbeat and how to steer the time. Here, the tempo is moderately bright, and I'm playing a simple groove, laying the kick, hi-hat, and snare in the dead center of the pulse like shooting an arrow through a bullseye. The combination gives the groove a vertical steady lock versus the push of forward motion or the pull of backward motion. I use the same beat in this example. The tempo is slightly slower than the first track, but the placement of the time here is more driving and on top of the beat. I'm leading the charge, as it were, by anticipating the attack of the eighth notes in the bass groove and staying out on the front edge of them to drive the track forward. Here is an example of playing more behind the beat, adding some backward motion to pull on the groove a bit. The tempo is slower than the previous examples, offering more space for a wider beat. The approach here is slightly different. The beat itself is the same as in the previous examples, but now it's less vertical, meaning that it's not locked in a perfectly synchronized straight line. Instead, it has a curve to it. If all my limbs were aligned on the back of the beat, the whole thing So my kick drum is deliberately up on top of the beat for clarity in the pulse, but the hi-hat is more down the middle for balance. I then lay the snare drum back as far as I can without being late to pull the beat back and enhance the vibe. 
like the last drops of syrup dripping off a stack of pancakes. Although there's a click audible in each of these examples, I'm not as focused on that as I am on the notes the bassist is playing, which I internalize by singing them to myself. I want to feel the attack and the release of each note, which greatly helps me determine where to place my notes to enhance the particular groove in play. I think of each note in the pulse as being circular, like the way we play quarter notes with brushes in a ballad. Picture the wheels on a bike. Rarely when you're out riding with a friend do you ride perfectly aligned side by side, you know? You might be riding at the same speed, but maybe you're out just a little bit ahead of your friend, and that's like playing on the top of the beat. Or you might be the one riding just a little bit behind, and that can be like laying back on the beat. And those times when you do ride perfectly side by side, that's like being spot on and driving right down the middle. To develop this skill, begin with an uncomplicated groove, like the one I played, to better focus on the feel. You'll build a strong foundation for playing more complicated grooves later. Then as you go through the studies in the book, you can also practice them with play-along examples like these in addition to a metronome to develop your feel and apply what you learn to a greater variety of music with a broader sensibility of how to steer the time in mind. We've looked at how manipulating the downbeats can help steer the direction of the time, and in part two of Improve Your Groove, we'll explore more options for enhancing the feel by altering the subdivisions inside the quarter note pulse. See you then.